Okay, so then we're going to hear from Reed about the solar. I found them. Yeah. Oh, people are asking how are the boards fastened to the thing. They're screwed in, right? Yeah, they're screwed in. Uh, yeah, this every... thing just doesn't have all the holes in it. Uh, like... Okay, so that's what we were, you know, I, I, I theorized that maybe they were just going to glue them in because I didn't see any um, screw holes in the bank. And so Chris says, yes, this one doesn't have them. But I mean, the mold's already done, so you can't put them in now i don't know how that works like on top of the hvac you know there's uh there's three screw holes so it's designed to go on top of the hvac and just screw into right to post that so so like in the bead pillar you can see you can see where the the holes will go um this bank doesn't have all the holes okay so this is what i wonder i'm like are they gonna drill these holes because that's possible but that's an extra step um and that's gonna be a lot of drilling uh when they manufacture this thing or maybe they have like self-drilling screws that just like drill as they screw in. Maybe that's the other way. But they're just going to screw it in here. Okay, that makes more sense. So that's a great question. Yeah. All right. It's Reed. Hi. Hey, Reed. Hi. Uh, Want to go over here and sure, look at yeah. our look at our solar panel? So Reed is amazing solar engineer. Do um, you want to just talk about why Aptera Solar is so unique in a high-level yeah. way? Absolutely. So when we... Uh, initially went out to make the vehicle and decided to put solar on it. We kind of looked out at the market and said, you know, is there anybody out there that can make solar for our vehicle? Um, unfortunately, at the time, there was nobody who could fit our requirements. So kind of our requirements are we have a super aerodynamic shape. We need a, a set of solar panels that can fit in the shape. Um, we have... <clears throat> Uh, cells facing different directions, mm -hmm. uh, getting different amounts of lights at different times. So we needed something that could break the panels up into basically smaller panels so that we can independently control and get power from them at different times. Because one of the things is that if you have a, a string of cells or cells that are all just electrically connected, uh, they really like to be under the same lighting conditions. Um, they don't like, uh, one common issue in the uh, kind of solar space is uh, you know if you have a leaf fall on your, one of your cells, what that can do is kind of bottleneck the rest of the panel. So we've done a lot of work to try to isolate different areas of the panels, try to break them up into smaller panels. And additionally, we didn't have charge controllers that were designed for our specific architecture, designed to go on a vehicle, uh, and designed to work on you know just mobile applications. So there's a lot of differences that can kind of come. As you can imagine, there's more rapidly changing conditions, think like driving under a bridge or yeah. driving under a tree. Um, People yeah. are asking how many strings are there? We have seven strings. Seven strings. Yeah, exactly. So we have seven different strings on the vehicle. Um, what that does is kind of breaks them into zones between panels. So our hood is one string. Um, we may, as we continue testing, see if we can break it up more, but that's not currently the plan. Yeah. So this is something, uh, that I remember talking to one of the solar firmware engineers back at the um, uh, the expo where they um, where they showed the gamma for the first time, and they talked about that problem of like where you're driving down the road and there's trees going overhead, and that residential solar and other solar applications are not equipped to deal with that rapid changing um, light. Uh, and shade issue. So they had to design a different solar charge controller than used for like residential or stationary um, applications. So looks like they figured that out and that part's done. And so, um, so they yeah, we've got seven strings. We're just explaining hood. this. One is on our dash. We have two on our roof and then we have three. Sorry, three on our hatch. <laughs> You're good. He's He's been busy working today. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, so those are the different zones Right. We break them into different strings. And one unique thing about our solar charge controllers, it can handle, um, it can independently control all seven of those zones at the same time on the same board. So a lot of times what you'll see on a building or on say a rooftop is you'll have one large charge controller or one charge controller per set of panels. Mm -hmm. So for us, we went the opposite direction. So things like our roof and hatch are, have multiple control inputs per panel instead of having you know a group of 10 panels that are all controlled at the same time. And that helps a lot with curvature, with the shading effect, 
uh, and with kind of maximizing the power that we get out of these curved panels. Cool. People yeah. are asking if the dash panels will have like some anti-reflective coating. Oh, uh, they will. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So that was something that we talked about when we saw the picture in the, um, the Twitter feed about the dash panels. They look real glossy. And I guess that gloss is actually um, a little protective film they put over it while they're waiting to put it on. So when you take that off, there's, a, there's an anti-reflective thing. So we haven't seen the anti-reflective version, um, but clearly they have thought of it. Yeah, I figured people are yeah asking you. I mean, the exterior panels will obviously be super shiny. Is there? Yes, they'll glass. be shiny. We've looked into, um, there's a lot of anti-reflective <laughs> coatings that we could apply this. There's some durability questions when it comes to the ex outside of your vehicle. Right. As well as the type of glass we're using. Um, you know, there's kind of a cost trade-off there as well. So durability and cost trade-off. So you can't have anti-reflective. You know, as you can imagine, putting an anti-reflective coating on something like your glasses um, is, those are lots of small objects. There's a lot of right. machines purpose built to handle small uh, pieces of glass and adding anti-reflective coatings to those. But when you scale up to the size of body panels on a vehicle, there's a lot, it gets a lot more expensive. So we're doing a lot of trade-offs there. Um, we found it just wasn't worth it price-wise, like cost per watt, basically. Right, makes sense. Yeah. Cool, I'm trying to think. People are really <laughs> excited about Polydrops and, and Avaris. Oh yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're, did we make the panels for, uh, yes. for Polydrops, like right, right over there? We did, yeah. Um, That's pretty cool that we can make different size panels like that. Yeah, absolutely. A big part of what we're doing on our line is being able to be very flexible with the shapes we can manufacture. So not only can we make uh, curved panels, but as you can imagine, each of our cell arrangements on each of our panels are different. So it's not just a rectangle. Like most panels you'll see on the market are just rectangles. And their lines are set up to make rectangles of the same size every single day. We've put a lot of work into trying to make our uh, line flexible. Uh, being able to accommodate different size panels on the same line and being able to accommodate uh, different configurations of cool. cells at different angles. Right. People are asking if the poly drop will get glass panels. Um, we are. So the, the original trial we did with poly drops, we used a, a polymer panel, but we're yep. looking at uh, using a chemically strengthened glass just like we have on our vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, that should improve the durability of them. But we just wanted to get a prototype out there. Yeah, uh, get them something as soon as possible. Yeah, they were so, they were very excited. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's that's the other thing we were we wondered about. It looked like the poly drops panel was a composite panel, and they've um, they've confirmed it, but they are working to move it over to glass and see if that works. And that's probably the same thing they're doing with Averest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we could talk about that because it was just sitting in here for a bit. And like we couldn't oh. take any pictures and videos of it. The uh, yeah, I think people took pictures of it. I think it got out. People kind of knew what was going on yeah. with that one. So, yeah, we're making some. Uh, we're making another set of panels for them. Cool. People you know, are asking like, uh, you know, obviously, will it will they pass hail? And then also like, how easy are they to replace if something happened to one of them? Yeah. So we're designing on our vehicle. We're designing them to be replaced just like a windshield. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, you know you you um, you know you remove your adhesive band around the perimeter, take your glass off, you apply it to a new sheet of glass and you just apply it on there. Something like safe light or something like that. Uh, so this is something we always wonder about. I kind of assumed that'd be really, really hard to replace, but you know, because of the right to repair, they're making it pretty easy to replace. It's like a windshield, which isn't that hard to replace. Yeah. Um, so trying to be easy to replace, that, that is very important for us. But cool. while also being lightweight uh, and fitting the environment well. Yeah. Whoa, someone's spamming. Oh, and um, remember when we had that blown up picture um, in the uh, June update? Those those rectangular strips are anti-vibration pads. Someone from um, after I told me those are just um, anti-vibration pads. I mean, what battery comes in the car? It's 44 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, <laughs> cool. All right, yeah. well, thank you so much, Reed, for all the work you yeah, and your team does. Uh, yeah. Trying to think if there's anything else. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Boom. Yeah, no problem. People are asking. Uh, Bye, Reed. <laughs> people are asking if um, we need additional capital for production funding. I guess that's a good segue to go over to talk to Blake about the U.S. capital stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. So. Um, <laughs> um, 
the solar panel things after hearing them talk about it you can see that they have thought about a bunch of things that like most of us haven't thought about you know the shading or the rapid changes in um in the amount of light that each panel gets and i guess like if one one side of the panel gets a lot of light and the other side gets low light that kind of ruins the whole thing so they set it they put it into many different zones and it's like it's very complicated what they're talking about and they've looked at anti-reflective coatings for the outside and they're doing a lot of cost benefit and like trade-offs and they're they're doing their best to try to make it the most cost efficient but uh best product they can so you know you get the again i get the feeling after hearing the engineers talk that like these guys know what they're doing and um they they've thought this through all right thanks for watching guys um we'll kind of summarize the rest of it later.